Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time or you're a returning viewer, you are definitely welcome. Do not forget to like and subscribe below. On this channel, I talk all things immigration with a sprinkle of lifestyle. See, salary negotiation is one of the skills that you need to survive in this country. If not, they might actually lowball you. Now, it depends on the culture of where you're coming from. I'm going to speak for Nigeria. In Nigeria, most times people don't negotiate salary. They just take what they get. Most times. I don't know if that has changed, but it's possible that it has not changed. But people don't necessarily negotiate salary. Over here, you have to negotiate. If not, you're going to get low board and the employer is going to get cheap labor. Now, let's start with the concept of something called a total compensation. You might not be used to it, but a total compensation is something that just does not involve your base salary. So, base salary is what most people are used to. That's what I knew before I came to Canada. I mean, the only thing I get is my base salary. But total compensation involves or includes your base salary, your sign-on bonus if you're getting any, your uh, profit share, the company does that, your performance bonus if you get that, even just random yearly bonus, uh, your stocks or uh, shares if they give you any. So all of that added together is what they call a total compensation. So when you're negotiating, you shouldn't be negotiating for just your base salary. You should be negotiating for any of those variables that your company offers. So depending on which one you're getting, when you add all of that up, that is your total compensation. So when you're negotiating, you want to negotiate from a point of what's my TC. So going forward, I'll call total compensation TC. Now, the rule of the game is never to accept the first offer. Yes, it, no matter how desperate you are for a job. So let's say you've been in Canada for six months and you haven't gotten any offer. And then the first offer you get is like for a 40K or 30K job. In some cases, you might be so desperate, you're like, okay, I need to start making money so I can pay my rent, move out of my sister's place, move out of where I'm uh, squatting or any of those things. I just need to take the job. So you might be tempted to take the first offer you get because maybe you're desperate. Because we're immigrants, we're more vulnerable to taking the first offer. And sometimes the recruiters can actually tell that this is your first job in Canada. So they'll try and lowball you and say, you don't have Canadian experience, uh, people that they give a higher bank to, they usually have experience or have this exposure or this and that. So they will look, they might lowball you as an immigrant. And because you're also desperate, you're like, okay, I left Nigeria, I left my home country, I need to get something going. Let me just get the experience first. It really doesn't matter how much I'm getting paid. Then I can now transition into another role or another job. I'm here to tell you today that you should not fall for that trick. Do not be desperate enough that you will take the first offer without even thinking things through. So let's start. How do you negotiate your salary when you get one? As always, you're going to be gracious and graceful about it. Thank you for the offer. It was really good going through the interview process, this and that. But you also want to do your research. You want to know how much they pay other people in your role for that particular job. Uh, you can use Glassdoor to check for salaries. You can use Payscale. So Payscale is uh, something that will consider like taking some variables from you to say, how many years of experience do you have? Uh, maybe what specifications do you have? And give you a range of what people make in that company for that role with that years of experience. You can also check levels.fyi. Levels.fyi tells you like uh, the leveling guide for different companies. So it will take like Google, for example, tell you what the levels are and then try to equate that to the leveling guide in Apple or the leveling guide in Microsoft. So you know when you're interviewing and they tell you, oh, this level is for, uh, let's say, level two or level three, you know what that is equivalent to in another company and another company. And then you'll also be able to use that exact same leveling guide to get the salary range or the salary band for that role. So let's start with you get a job and they come up and say, you want to pay you 70K. Now, the thing is, this is the way I see negotiating salary. If they give you 70K and you want 75K, don't ask for 75K. This is just a personal thing I do. I don't know if it's going to work every single time. Please don't hold me to this. I'm just telling you what I have done in the past, what I've seen people do, and what I think will work. If you want 75K, don't ask for 75k. If you ask for 75k, they might give you some 2500 or 73k, which is still not bad. But if you want exactly 75k, ask for like 77, ask for 78, ask for 80k. So they will price you down to the value that you want or to the amount that you want. And also, when you're negotiating salary, don't be proud about it. Don't say, 
I deserve 50k or I deserve 80k or you should pay me 80k or I hear that you're paying people 80k. You have to be uh, professional about it. You have to give reasons as to why you want more money. In some cases, you may actually have to send an email stating why you want that extra cash. It could be uh, over the past two years, I've worked on this project and this project that generated this revenue. I've accumulated this kind of experience over the past couple of years. I've also grown myself in that role to the extent where I've taken the two uh, most recognized certifications in this and that. And those certifications bring in an average of 70k per annum for people with that experience. I have seven years of experience in this. Like, tell them why you're valued at 80k or 70k or whatever amount you're asking for. You can't be pompous about it. Yes, know your worth. Like, I can't overemphasize that enough. You have to know your worth. People will lower you and people will try and get cheap labor out of you. But if you know what they're paying other people in that same role, or you know how much you should be getting and it's very low compared to what they're offering you, then you should actually uh, negotiate. So that's the first trick. So personal story time. When I was interviewing for my job, when they called me and they're like, bless me, it's time to negotiate salary. I was like, okay, how much do you pay for this role? They're like, no. Tell me how much you want. I'm like, no. You tell me how much you pay. We actually did this for like two minutes. I'm like, no. Tell me how much. Tell me what the band is. You can say, no blessing. You have to tell me what you want. I'm like, no, I'm not telling you what I want. You tell me how much you can pay me. And I did that for like two minutes. And I got so mad because I'm like, why won't you just tell me how much you're willing to pay? And she said, it's your job to do your research and tell me how much you want. Whether I can pay you how much you want or not is another conversation. But you tell me exactly what you want. She actually did not give me a range. She will not. Like, I spent like this. We did this whole back and forth about you tell me, you don't tell me. And she's like, listen. I am not telling you the bitch. Ask me what you want. So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, do you mind if we reschedule this call for another time? I have to go do my research. In my head, I already knew what they were paying other people. But I was hoping she would give me a range so I can just take the highest bar and then ask for more money on top of the uh, highest bands that she gave me. But she didn't even give me anything. I'm like, I don't want to go and say 90k before she will now lowball me and jigger because to them, it's uh, it's cheap labor. You ask for it, they give it to you. So imagine if she was willing to pay, let's say, 100k, and I go ask for 70k. She's going to take it and say, okay, blessing. You ask for 70k, let me give you 80k. And I'm going to be like, oh my god, they were so nice. They really wanted me to give me 80k. But in reality, I didn't even get to the minimum they were willing to pay because I did not ask for it. So in my head, I'm like, when she said she wasn't going to tell me the range, I should ask for exactly what I want. I just said, let's reschedule this call for another time. I would like to go do my research. I was like, yeah, that's fine. Come back with a number when you have it. When I say do your research, I actually mean do your research. If let's say a role gives a range or a band of 70k to 90k, and you go in and go and ask for 170k, at that point in time, you're just like, how did you go from 70 to 90k as a range to 170k? Like, that's just way out of line. And I think you also need to, like, uh, be reasonable with your ass. It doesn't mean that you're not valued at 170k. It just means that that job at that point in time for that role, based on the research that you're, you've done or that you're doing, doesn't pay 170k. It doesn't mean another employer will not pay you 170k. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say you're not worth it. I'm just trying to say you have to know the employer, you have to know the job, and you have to know what they've been paying in the past and what they're willing to pay. So if, uh, if the company only pays like 70k or maximum of it's 5k, and you're going asking for 180k. It's not that you're not worth 180k. It's just that the employer cannot pay you 180k because they haven't done it before. They don't value uh, they don't value their employees that much, or they can't even afford you. It's just as simple as that. Doesn't mean another company will not pay you the money. So when you're asking for the salary, be reasonable with it and also ask uh, according to the research that you've done. So let's say they tell you what the range is. They're like, we can't move or we can't compromise on the base salary. There are other things you can negotiate from your TC. You can negotiate your sign-on bonus. So sign-on bonus is what you get for joining the company. It's basically a way of saying, thank you for choosing us today. Thank you for joining our company. Take this money as your sign-on bonus. And some companies pay sign-on bonus. It depends. You can negotiate your sign-on bonus. In some cases, some companies might actually give you the sign-on bonus upfront. So let's say your base is 70k, they give you a sign-up bonus of 20k, uh, you can negotiate to say, okay, since you're not willing to pay me 85k as my base, 
can you make my sign-on bonus 30k or 35k there is room to always negotiate if it's a company that offers shares or stocks you can also negotiate that now there are two ways to think about this if the company is already public meaning they've gone ipo they might give you let's say 20 units of their stocks for free for joining their company and then if they're saying they're not giving you more base salary you can say okay give me 30 units of your stocks instead because now you're banking on the fact that the stocks might actually appreciate and do well so you probably get more money if you get more units in stocks or if it's a company that plans to go public and they're like okay we plan to go public in two years if you're still with us we'll give like 1000 units i said those are like the best companies that you can join i'm actually thinking about it just go join a company that's about to go public they give you like 3000 units of stocks they go public and you get millions that's just like that bro that's the easiest way to make money out there but for those kind of companies you want to negotiate more stocks up front like maybe three thousand units two thousand units five thousand units compared to a company that is already public they might not be generous enough to give you three thousand units they might give you like 200 250 and all of those things so knowing ahead of time if the company plans to go public can actually help you negotiate more uh stocks you need to way ahead of time because you know that when they go public you might actually become a billionaire from that so that's one thing uh negotiate your base salary negotiate your sign-on bonus negotiate the stocks the other non-monetary uh things that you can negotiate will probably be like vacation days people take or people just don't pay much attention to vacation days it depends on the culture of where you're coming from in my own case from nigeria vacation days is vacation days just give me whatever you have and i'm done but in reality you can actually negotiate for vacation days if they, let's say they're giving you 10 if they're not willing to move up your base move up your sign on will i give you more stocks then you can negotiate your vacation days so let's say you can go from 10 working days to 15 working days so that's something to negotiate or you can also negotiate something called a pay time off so in some cases you will have vacation days you have pay time off and you have sick days those are actually things you should consider as well when you're negotiating see not everything is about base salary three years down the line in canada i'm actually starting to learn with time that it's not everything is not based before now as a last year i used to think that base was the most important thing uh as part of your tc but it is not there are so many other things to negotiate uh, apart from your base salary so anyways that's all i have on the channel today remember do not take the first offer you should always negotiate there's always room for more and you should not look well or be desperate enough to take anything uh, i will see you on my next video bye <gasps>